So this cube, we'll start off by just X and sending it off to the farm. Sorry cube. Shift A, we'll insert a plane. And we'll select this first point and by control clicking mark, we'll just add a bevel. And we'll just roll in some points and it really doesn't matter because the thing is, is we're just getting a bevel started with this point. And we're gonna go on the modifier panel and play with custom. And today I'm playing with 2.9 just for reasons, but really you can be doing this in 2.8. It also works there. But I just like to get in here with these points and just begin making a shape. And because I have a ton of points already on the board from the initial scroll, I know that I can build basically any shape I want. And so I'll just get in here and just play with stuff and just, you know, I'm not always entirely accurate. People have been asking if they can build these in CAD programs and all that stuff. But I mean, that's an abhorrent amount of work to be adding to the process for something that, you know, most users won't even know exists. So the purpose of this video is to let people be aware that bevel profiles have been supported for a while. We've been working on it, but now I believe they finally have approached a level where we can talk about it because... I wanted them to be supported to a level that you could save and load them across Blender versions. We'd never lose them through installations or whatever happened. You'd be able to share them across computers. You'd be able to scroll and recall them. So I feel that the goals that I set out for with uh, Bevel Profile have been accomplished. And so this morning, I was just saying, you know, pretty, pretty glad with the state of things with uh, Bevel Profiles at this time. There's not anything real big on the list that we're needing to go for with it. So... It means that we're clear to um, have a discussion on it, which is my favorite time for a feature. So we're just adding points, just really just beveling to the max here while we're talking. I mean, if I wanted to, I could grab this number and then copy it here. And I could grab this number and paste it here and grab this number with uh, control C and then select this one and control V and start to get things really accurate. So I've been working on a pack for the longest and this one will fit at home. Another fun thing to do with these profiles after you've created them like this is to press alt W and to just grab the bevel dot and just bring it in and out, which is just something I like to do. You know, I'm weird like that. So after bringing it in and out a couple of times and really just dreaming about what it could be both big and small, then I decide, hey, I'm gonna save this. So if we press Q, we can go under our settings and there's the key map prep. So if you just click this, you can bring up your preferences for hard ops and you can see at the last place I was at was the fast UI. But if we go over to the properties, you can actually set your path for where your profiles are saved at. And I have mine saved to my Dropbox because I'm recalling both my light rigs and my profiles across multiple computers. So I want users to also be able to, of course, do that same thing. And so at some point, I don't know what I'll end up doing with all the profiles I'm making, but the goal today is to get you guys making even cooler profiles. So now that we've talked about where you would store your profiles at and setting up your profile location, let's talk about saving it. So currently in the modifier panel itself, there's no options added to the modifier because we're not those kind of blender hackers yet. We're not just modifying the modifier, but in the whenever you right click the bevel dot it actually brings up the hops dot bevel which is a different bevel i mean it looks like blender's bevel but we do have a save and load profile and so we maybe don't need 23 points let's make sure we have just enough points for this there we go exactly enough points at 20. so let's bring this up again so let's decide now we want to save this profile so we will save this profile and I'll just select Bevel Profile 26, click the plus to increment it by one, and let's welcome to this world Bevel Profile number 28. And so when it comes to your Bevel Profiles, it saves not only your point count, it saves your handle types and all the interpolations in between. I mean, for the most part, there might be some bugs. It still is something that we're working on, but for the most part, you should be able to save and load your profiles easily across different Blender versions. So. I can just press either right click the dot in hops tool, but let's say that you're not even in hops tool, you're in box cutter because box cutter is the place to be. You'll press control tilde. And if you bring up the modifier helper, you also have save and load in our modifier helper because you're in one of our zones. So we can go here and actually load up bevel profile 26. 
we can go in here, load up a different profile, maybe number 25, go in here, load a different profile, number 24, and let's actually load the profile that we left off on, which was this one. And we see that we were able to load these different profiles with different points because I've saved them and stored them over time. And even the point counts are stored, so it should help restore the profile to the intended accuracy that you made it with. But when it comes to curvature and playing with different types of handles, it's a little bit different. Of course, we're more oriented towards hard surface, not so much home crown molding, but we try our best. So that's basically bevel profiles in a nutshell. So with this profile that we've created, I'm just going to delete this plane and we're going to add another plane. And with this plane, we're just going to press D and choose bisect and we'll just split this in half and I'm going to select this point and we'll do the same thing as before. Just control click mark in order to just bevel this point. And you know, during that bevel, we actually could have just press shift P to scroll through our bevel profile. So I'm just going to scroll through my bevel profiles until I find the one that we're looking for, which is in the twos. It's this one right here, almost, almost got me. It's bevel profile 28 to be more accurate. Maybe it's actually 27. So 27 is actually the profile that we're looking to create. So now we have our profile created. And with this, we can just go under add modifier and add a screw. And the screw, of course, is going to come up on the wrong axis because we don't know which way is front or backwards anymore in 2.8. I don't know why it's not Blender's fault, but I just don't know anymore. So we'll press X and change the axis that we're affecting. We'll press X again, and now we're on the correct axis. But with the shape being red, that means that we've made a mistake somewhere. Our normals were flipped. So if we press F, we can flip that correct, and now the object is the way it's supposed to be. And people always ask why I do it this way instead of using a cylinder. And that's because I'm able to go back in here and actually change this to something like 64 to get a better roll on what I'm going, what I'm getting on this. I may want to deal with the bevel on that later on, but that basically is bevel profiles in a nutshell. And because everything is still non-destructive, even though we're looking at this as a solid form, we can still go in and adjust the bevel and just lower the amount, which cr differentiates the type of shape that it is by a large margin. But I mean, I'm sure you remember in the past where I've created a variety of different types of solenoids and we went through different methods in creating them. But at this point with bevel profiles, this is probably the most trivial that solenoids have ever gotten. And keep in mind that anytime you're inside of bevel, you can just press shift P and just scroll through different types of profiles that you have stored up. And I've been trying to figure out what's the best thing to do with all the profiles I've been making, but I figured I would actually get to a certain number and to just do something drastic like start over. But really bevel profiles are just something that you should get in there and create for yourself and you know talk about what kind of results you're able to get with it with different types of cuts because there's so much that you're able to get out of it because it's um, it has so much potential. And then when you get the points just right and you save it, you can actually see the points over on the right just changing for every scroll that I'm going through as far as choosing it. And then if I want to go back to where I started, I just right click and I'm right back to where I left off. So there's so much more that we're able to do with this than just adjust the bevel of it, right? You know, back in the day with the solenoid, we would select the shape, shift click smart apply, which is now slightly smarter. And we would just play off of a clone to get a face that we would inset delete everything else, and then keep the main part, turn it into a solidify, difference, and then look at it in front mode and switch box to end gone with cyclic mode off and begin cutting panel lines. So this is, you know, one of the classic ways I like to get in and test the tools when it comes to messing with solenoids. We'll press alt X, uh, X to reset it to modifier, and we'll mirror it over to the other side. And we just have this shape. And the best part is that we can press Alt W, switch over to Hops Tool, which is our current lounge for box cutter. And we can just grab things and move them around and we can still see the bevel playing bevel and Boolean both playing their role working together. But that in a nutshell is bevel profiles and how you can use them inside of hard ops. To expand on it one more time, even a little bit further, this was an example I was showing yesterday on Twitter where, you know, I just took a simple cube and extruded it out. 
and then performed a clean mesh on it. And then from here, we did a bisect to split half of it off. But in the demo, there was this face on the other side, which was kind of nasty. And then we just took these edges, beveled it, and took these edges, did the same, and then, you know, select an edge and holding control to work our way around. We can then control click mark to work a bevel in here. And so this is, you know, your, your classic bevel. And we'll do the same thing at the bottom. Select this one, just control click mark, roll the wheel in. And so we have this shape and this is just kind of our starting point. Here we are playing with our bottom. But if we want to switch to the other bevel, we can just hold control and roll the wheel. And we could jump up to the first bevel where we can then begin having our fun. If we were to press shift P, we begin the bevel profile. And by scrolling it, we can begin making these really unique shapes that would normally be pretty difficult to create, even with Boolean modifiers themselves, just with the power of bevel profiles. And this was really what kind of brought home to me the potential of what was possible with bevel profiles and what they offer to modeling. I mean, there's of course trim machine that's coming soon as part of decal machine, I'm hoping, but this is a, also a step kind of in that same direction as far as showing the potential that can be had with just playing with different types of profiles. Of course, if I want to keep this profile, I can press P and now we're back to adjusting the bevel and I could just control scroll to jump to the second one where we're in profile mode, which we don't wanna be, but we can press shift P to jump into profile scroll and we can do the same thing at the bottom, just begin scrolling through these profiles that we're storing and always tell the team, I'm like, you know, I think we're approaching this event called Singularity where basically, you know, this workflow we're going for is together. We just need to begin figuring out the final package on how we'd like to deliver it to the masses and new users because to people following the canon, things may seem a little complicated, but there's always this end goal to me of packaging up in a way where new users will be able to experience hops the way it was fully intended. Of course, a lot of the way that we work now carries over from how we worked in Blender 2.79 and we weren't afforded the luxury of being able to completely rethink things on the hard up side as we did with box cutter. But getting back on topic, we're going to press alt X and we will press X again to reset the modifier and we'll just mirror it to the other side. And here's our sci-fi robot boot. And to just get our shading in line, back in the day, I would hit sharpen and sharpen would do kind of a mediocre job. And that's because you have to press F9 and go in and adjust the sharpness. But in this case, we don't actually need sharpen. What we need to do is smooth this shape and adjust the auto smooth finally. And for that reason, whenever you press Q and you go under sharpen, shift clicking sharpen will bring up the automo the interactive auto smooth. I almost called it the auto mode inter i don't know that was not a word but anyways if we shift click it we can see that this will bring us to an auto smooth modal where moving the mouse will allow us to finally adjust the shading and rolling the wheel will allow us to get it a little bit rougher so when it comes to getting your smoothing just right sometimes it's just a matter of you getting in and adjusting your auto smooth and that's the reason that the modal exists and i hope that more users are picking up and using this when it comes to controlling your shading and making your way around your form because it definitely can make the difference between you know having a frustrating experience with shading looking terrible and having a smooth experience with your shading working out but in closing i just want you to know that of course you can still go back and modify what you have going on. I could press shift P again, go back through modify scroll or uh, profile scroll. I can't go too big, but we can find interesting profiles to close this video out on. So for this one, we'll do the same thing, profile scroll. Maybe we'll even scroll for the same profile, which is this one right here. And with that, we've actually made kind of a robot conduit boots thing and we'll wrap up this video and I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.